We're going to do a case study now of longitudinal standing waves. Previously, we looked at string. Ma. String is like transverse wave. Okay, you move the string up and then the thing goes yum, 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 and then you've got a standing wave. But now it's longitudinal. Longitudinal also can have standing wave, you know. So we're going to look at two types. We're going to look at the closed pipe, okay, or what, more accurately, I should say, uh, open closed pipe. So one end is open, one side is closed. And we're also going to look at the open open pipe. This is just like a open pipe, lah. That open, open. So we're going to do these two case studies today on pipes. Okay, let's go and see why it's all about these open pipes. Now first, well, we have the setup here where you're going to have a tube. I don't know what tube is. You can use a test tube, any tube. But you have a tube and you have a frequency generator, aka your loudspeaker. So frequency generator is here and it's going to vary the frequency. So your variable here is going to be F. Okay, you turn the knob, you change the F, okay? So that's the frequency generator connect to your speaker. Okay, then you have um, a tube with some length L. Let's call this L. And you're going to use this loudspeaker and find some frequencies that will form standing waves inside there. So not all frequencies can work, right? Okay. And also, also, at one end is the open end. So open end always will have anti note there. This is kind of a fixed condition. So this is always an anti note. See how it's like, you know, open there. Whereas here you're like, oh, there's a note there. Okay, so this is our close end. So close end will always have a node on the end. Okay, so it's like strings are string both end fixed, then both end is anti node, but now not always the case, ma. Okay. So this is our setup here. Now if you're wondering what how to imagine this, I brought a very quick demo for you to hear. Last time or oh, people thought, um, we can make music with pipes, right? Yeah. Oh. So even if you take any pipe like this, oh, this is like a fake trumpet. I honestly do not know how to play the trumpet. So if you are a trumpet player, please pardon me. But you can take any pipe. And you can be the frequency generator and you blow into it. So you're going to have some farting noises. How to play this thing? It's like a fake trumpet, homemade trumpet. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Um, you can, if you know how to play trumpet, you can change the sound. I have no idea how to do that. My lips will split if I try to do that. Because I don't have proper technique. Okay. So that's what you're doing. You're going to make vibrations in there. And you are going to hear some sounds. Now, what will the sounds be like? Well, they'll be very different. Depending on which um, harmonic, which overtone, which mode you are. So, all the things that you learn from the sending waves in string can be applied to this as well. Okay? So, instead of um, string vibrating, you have particles getting compressed like this. Wow, very compressed, all squashed together, very high pressure. And then get stretched out because these are longitudinal now. They're all moving left, right, left, right already. Okay. So um, we are going to draw our standing wave patterns, but maybe not in terms of uh, these lines or dots because it's a bit hard to draw. So we're going to draw this blue line. Okay. We're going to use the displacement position graph to symbolize our standing wave patterns. Okay. Although it's a longitudinal wave. So what does this graph mean? Well, you look at this particle here at this node. It's not moving. It's a node. So here the displacement will be zero, not moving at all. Okay. The other particles, they will move to the left, move to the right, move to the left, move to the right. So they have positive displacement, negative displacement, and so on and so forth. Okay. So this here on the left side is a node. On the right side here is an anti node. Okay. Most movement. Particles there will just move up, down, up, down, up, down. And of course, we're going to use the frequency generator to up the frequency. We find the first harmonic. Okay, second harmonic. You know, you get all kind of thing. You oscillate faster. Okay, this is how it's, This is what we're going to try draw. Okay, at these notes again, the, the particles are not moving. That's why your displacement is zero at all times. Here also got one more note. Up the frequency some more. Wow, then you see something in studio. Okay, so here you have one, two, three, four notes. My computer is also dying a bit. Okay. So yes, you see all these compressed sections a bit fast. Those are all your nodes, 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 okay? And they take turns to go there. Okay, so now we're going to do a drawing exercise. We're going to draw all these frequencies in our paper. Back to this, okay? Now, we're going to do our good old exercise 
very similar to string so try to keep up if you can't never mind you can't draw in time well then you can look back at the notes to refer okay first one what we call this remember there's a name for it we call it the fundamental node first frequency so just now if i blow the pipe the lowest 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 note that you can hear that is very loud that will be your fundamental frequency so here how would the inside look like well you kind of have to remember Closed pipe, so at the end is a node, the other open end is an NT node. Is this fixed? Yes, might as well write for everything. Okay, la, N A N A N A. So here you're gonna start from the middle. This is gonna be maximum, so just something like that. I'm gonna zoom out a bit for the future ones because it's a bit hard to draw when it's this zoomed in. Okay, so now you have to do the same thing when we did for strings. If this length is L, what is the wavelength? Okay, remember, one section like these, this is what we call half a wavelength. This is a half a wavelength also. So now we are only taking this part. So half of half wavelength, that's a quarter wavelength already. So you need to write what is the wavelength. So you say the pipe's length L is the wavelength chopped up into four parts. So L uh, lambda over four. Therefore, the first wavelength, the fundamental wavelength will be 4L. Wow, okay, good to know. That's all. Then we can call this our fundamental frequency. Why not? Let's put F0 here. Okay, so that's our very first one, fundamental node. Then you go up one more, what do you do? Remember this. Every time you go up an overtone or something like that, you are adding half a wavelength. You are squeezing half a wavelength inside there. So okay, so we need to squeeze in a loop like this one loop squeeze inside there so how to change left mm. so you got a got n so you need to put two more things here so have to be alternate muscle so here is a here is n okay so nodes have to pass by the middle so I'm gonna try my best to draw this like that and like that the end still open so this one is the opposite it's oscillating. Oh, not bad. Okay. So, na na, you have two now. So, what will be the length of this? Well, you can take this and think. Length is, well, if you want to cheat, just remember your original plus lambda over two. Ah. What is that? You can try to count it, you can try to do that, but you can say length is three lambda one over four. Then you take one over four plus half, you get three over four. Or you can count here is. Lambda over 2 plus, what is this? Mm, lambda over 4. Okay, so we're going to add law 3 over 4. There are many ways to do this. Just know that each round you are adding half a wavelength. Okay, so what will lambda 1 be? Lambda 1 will be 4 over 3 L. That's your first frequency. Ooh, notice we have a pattern here. Originally, it's 4 wavelength. Lah. Then you divide by 3. Interesting. Why three? Is there a pattern for this? Ah? Hmm, let's go and see. Okay, okay, we continue. We draw some more. And by the way, this one has a name. We call this the first overtone. But you need to know this during exam though. They'll just call it patterns. Okay. So also, if your wavelength go three times smaller, means your frequency must be three times bigger. So this will be times three. Ooh, something interesting about these open closed pipes. Their frequencies are unusual from the string one. Okay, we go one more up. The next, you change frequency up, up, up until you hear another sending wave pattern. So what would this one be? Node, anti-node. You need to fit in one more wavelength. Oh, how to fit in there? So let's see if I can put... Hmm, what if I do this? Node, node, anti-node, anti-node. Will that work? Let's try it out. Okay, so no, no, no. Okay, so we have two loops here. Correct, Eddie. Because here only got one full loop. And then, of course, the other side one. So, so be like that. Oh man, it didn't go to the top. Then down. And then up. Okay, and then of course, this dotted one to symbolize that it's oscillating back and forth. There we go. So at first, only got one loop. Now you, again, add half a wavelength. Then you have two loops now. And then, of course, the half note at the open end. Okay, this is what we call the second overtone. 
your length now, you 3 over 4 plus half again, then you will get 5 over 4 now. Okay, or you can think of here to here is one full wavelength. Here to here is quarter wavelength. So 1 plus 1 over 4 is 5 over 4. You can also think of it that way, which means your wavelength lambda 2 is 4 over 5 L. Oh, you see the pattern? 4 divided by 5 become that one. So the next step up, you have to divide by 5 already. Oh, interesting. Divide by 3, divide by 5, is it odd number? Ah? Or pattern emerging? Hmm, interesting. So, accordingly, because your wavelength is smaller, now your frequency has to increase by the same factor. So, on this side, you will have 5 F0 of the fundamental. So, this will be times 5. Okay, last one. Okay, let's try this. So, I've got many, many, many nodes. Same principle, you add another half wavelength to go up to the next pattern. Same thing, N and A or the N. But how many inside there? Le? Wow, now I need 3 inside there. So, let's see. 1, 2, 3. Let's try that. Okay, so this node, node, node. Anti node, anti node, anti node, anti node. So, 1, 2, 3, and then the half one is there. It's a bit out of shape, lah, but you get the idea. There, there. And then here, actually the notes should be a bit more spaced out. Something like that. Okay lah, can lah you. Roughly, roughly, you know the idea. See, I got two AA lah, so actually this one should just be like that. Okay, na 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 na. Okay, so three and a half loop. This is called the third overtone. And you can keep on going for many, many overtones forever and ever. But this one... Your L will be 7 over 4 lambda now. You 5 over 4 plus half 7 over 4, which means your lambda 3 will be 4 over 7 L. Double check. Original is 4. Divide by 7, 4 over 7. Okay, lah. So this is this. Um, divide by 7 of the original. Okay, hang already on the computer. Ah, never mind. Lah. Oh, there we go. Divide by 7 of your original uh, wavelength, which means also the same thing for frequency times 3 times 5, so here times 7. So this will be our 7, uh, seven times our fundamental frequency. So that is the whole thing right here, all these beautiful steps. Wow, look at that. So you just need to learn how to draw it and notice these are only odd 357, 357, 357. If you see the pattern now, you say, Miss, this looks like arithmetic progression. You have some number plus half, plus half, plus half, plus half, and then you have times 3, times 5, times 7. Yes, it is an arithmetic progression. That's maths in physics and in music as well. Music is all about arithmetic progression, in case you didn't know. So, something to summarize up, okay? Because of our V equals to F lambda relationship, um, you can say that lambda is proportional to 1 over f. Which means, if your lambda is getting smaller by, let's say, 3 times, then your frequency is increasing by 3 times, which is why we have this divide by 7 times 7. Okay, left side, right side, different things. Lastly, one more note. Um, if, let's say, uh, you change your frequency generator to some frequency that is not any of these multiples on the left side, it's not... The fundamental is not three times, it's not five times, it's not seven times. You can say uh, if your f is not an odd multiple, this is what we use odd multiple 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. If not odd, mul odd multiple of f0, then you won't hear any loud sound. No loud sound, uh, loud sound or resonance heard. Which is why if I'm trying to make a music note in a pipe, like a trumpet, I will need to um, blow at a certain frequency, generate a frequency inside the pipe before it can be a loud sound. Lah. So if not loud sound, it'll be like... <laughs> but if you can bust your lips at the right frequency, wow, then suddenly it becomes very loud. <laughs> wow, I cannot already, my lips hang out. Anyway... Go rewind to the earlier one to hear the sound. Okay, 
So that is our open close pipes. Once again, you can stare at the simulation. Okay, this is down in the description to see how it's moving. And remember, all these patterns that we draw are, are displacement position graphs. Because all the all the particle the wave is a longitudinal wave. Okay, so this curvy curvy loop thing is displacement position, displacement of the particle or these red lines inside the pipe. Okay, now the next one is there's another way you can change or play around with these frequencies also for our open closed pipe. Okay, and it looks something like this. This is our second setup. What's the difference between here? On the left side, you change the frequency. On the red, right side, you're using a tuning fork. So this tuning fork, you hit it, ping! It all has the same frequency. So here, your uh, frequency is constant. So we can't change frequency. You always have the same frequency generated from this fork. Go inside the thing. Um, but then how are you going to change anything then? Ah. We turn this tap and let out some water. So we just change your water level. So we are varying water level. And by varying water level, you are varying the length of the tube. Ah, okay, that's how you can do that. Okay, so let's see. How can we vary the water of the tube and what does that affect? So here we go again. We're going to draw all the lines. Okay, now we are changing a different thing. We're not changing frequency anymore. We're changing the length. So if I have different water level, okay, all this thing is water, then I'm basically changing the length of the air column uh, where the particles, air particles can vibrate. So first things first. Okay, so this one, you should know by now, it's node, anti-node. So it's going to be just like that. That's your fundamental frequency. Okay, then from there, you're going to have node. Ooh, we need to add half a wavelength, remember? So we're adding half a wavelength, or aka one loop. Add one loop inside. Okay, so now we have also a node here. Still anti-node there. So it's going to look something like this. Zoop. Okay. Then you continue, you add another loop. So now we have three nodes. Here node, here anti-node. And you do the same thing. And then over time, you will learn to draw this faster. But during exams, uh, if they ask you a question and they never give you a picture, oh, you better draw these things out. If not, you will be confusion. Okay, so node, 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 anti-node. I'm not going to label all the nodes. You should know which are nodes by now. So now I have a length 4. Quite long now. And I'm just going to draw the nodes. Anti-node, node, anti-node, node, anti-node, node, anti-node, and anti-node. Oh, almost barely made it. Man, if I can draw this on a digital tablet, you should be able to draw this on paper. Okay, please learn how to draw these things. Although it's not as pretty, but at least you know roughly what's going on. Okay, so this is our different frequencies that can form. If your water level is, let's say between L1 and L2, it's somewhere in between, you're not going to form a standing wave pattern because there's not enough space to fit your standing wave loops inside there. It must be half a loop, Sorry, half a loop, one and a half loop, two and a half loop, or like, you know, it has to be a certain interval. You cannot simply just use any length. Okay, so each one is plus half a wavelength. Hang again. Plus half a wavelength, and your pipe get longer and longer and longer and longer. So what are the frequencies? Well, if I write it down here, this minus times seven is kind of in the way. So let me just rub that off a bit. So to save time, I'm just going to do, I'm not going to count the wavelengths anymore. You can do that. I will write, I will use arithmetic progression to cheat a bit. So first one is lambda over 4. Because you see, your first length can only fit a quarter of a loop. A loop is lambda over 2, so quarter over 4. Then if I plus 2, sorry, plus half, lambda over 2, then you get L2 equals to 3 over 4 lambda. Do the same thing again, our arithmetic progression. Plus lambda over 2, get L3 equals to 5 over 4. Add again, you fit more and more wavelength inside, okay? Then your pipe can fit in 7 over 4 of a wavelength. Of course, you can rearrange this to get your lambda, lambda 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whichever one is it lah. Okay, 0, 1, 2, Tree, so on and so forth. So some things to summarize is 
your patterns, okay, L2 is 3 times of L1. Okay, 3 over 4, 3 over 4, okay. So I'm just writing out some relationships to point out to you. And of course, L3, the third length, is how many times? 5 times, right? 1 over 4, so 5 times of the original length. Then L5 is 7 times the original length. So look at that, the 1, 3, 5, 7, the 3, 5, 7 odd, 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 odd number thing come out again. That is for open, closed tubes. Okay, this is just some patterns for you to see, to point out. Okay, to summarize, you're like, Miss, I don't know how to draw all this. Practice now, learn how to draw. It's not that hard, you just need to know the principles behind it. So I'm going to summarize some key principles about all this stuff, how you can draw all this in the blink of an eye. So the first principle to keep in mind is you need to know where are your permanent nodes and anti nodes. Nodes and anti nodes, meaning you know open close pipe. So that close one always node, open one always anti node. Then that one is the first step, ready? Right? So you need to know where is the permanent nodes and anti nodes. That's the first step. The second step. You need to know how to draw the simplest pattern. So, step thing. I want to know where you're permanent. How to draw simplest pattern. So, for open closed pipes, your simplest pattern will just be like that. Lor. Node to empty node. That's the simplest pattern. If it's a close close or a string, your simplest pattern is this. Node to node. Ah, you need to know the difference already now. Node, empty node or node node. What is the simplest pattern? And then you need to know each harmonic or each overtone you go up, each pattern you add, uh, you need to uh, add half a wavelength. So each additional or added overtone, I guess you could say that, each additional overtone, you just plus half a wavelength. Uh, you squeeze in half a wavelength. It's also aka one loop. You fit in one loop. And the last number three, okay, if you want to think of the relationship between frequency and wavelength, so for some frequency, if your wavelength go down two times, then how does the frequency change? Your frequency must go up two times. Huh? This is an example. Huh? So like, oh, we're looking here, your wavelength go down five times, so your frequency go up five times. So that is the whole relationship between these. If you get these basic ideas can correct, you can pretty much... On the spot, wow, what just happened? On the spot, draw out any kind of uh, series of harmonics and overtones and things like that. Once again, I repeat, if you see uh, all this pattern that we have drawn, it's actually our displacement graph that we are drawing because we are looking at longitudinal waves, right? So, if we whatever we have drawn just now is going to look something like this. So through the notes, <clears throat> through the notes, you are kind of just going like this, and you don't have any displacement. This is which is why your uh, notes here don't really move. So you're basically drawing this thing. No, this one is same as this red line. Okay, it's the displacement graph. Now, if you are not convinced, look at the particle which I draw red line at the node. You see the particle not moving, right? Not moving, not. Okay, so these are node, 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 node. All the other particles in between move a lot. So they have very big displacement and that's why we draw these loops. Okay, remember, uh, these are longitudinal waves now. So the particles are just moving left and right, left and right, left and right. I want you to pay attention to the graph on top though. There are some passive questions. You see, they will ask you about this. Pressure graph. Huh? What is this? So pressure graph is basically how much squash are these particles. If this is you, and your friend squashed you, and another friend squashed you, wow, then you're very high pressure. Lor. That's the whole idea of it. So notice, this is going to be a change in pressure. So you have um, very, very big change in pressure at your nodes. Wow, suddenly you high pressure. That's suddenly low pressure. Wow, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure. So keep this in mind. At nodes, you have a very big pressure change. Because at the nodes, which are the red lines, particles are not moving, but their neighbors will squash them and then 
very spread out and then squash them and they spread out. Well, it takes turn out. So that's why we call a big pressure change. Delta P. There's one graph we'll look at, but at the end of this video.